All right, good morning, everyone. We'll be continuing on with Menucha Sanefesh, calmness of mind. Um, and we, this, yes, last week and the week before, we went through the Sefer Chajban Anefesh, uh, who discusses at length uh, the, the Mida of Menucha Sanefesh. Uh, and he discusses a lot more the negative aspects of what happens when a person doesn't live with Menucha Sanefesh. Uh, and oftentimes when you highlight the negative of what happens when you don't let's, uh, live with Menuchas HaNefesh, helps remind us of what it means to live with Menuchas HaNefesh, uh, and hopefully tap into that. Uh, now we'll go a little bit more into uh, the depths of Menuchas HaNefesh and how we attain it. Uh, and this is going to be, we're jumping to a new sefer now. This is called Sif Seich Chaim, uh, and written by Reb Chaim Friedlander, who is a Talmud of, um, of Reb Elio Dessler in Panovich, um, and he's going to go through um, a, a more at depth what Menuchas, it, Menuchas and Nefesh exactly is, how we attain it, uh, and hopefully how we can go through our lives with more focus and calmness of mind, less distraction. Uh, and he starts off by giving an example of, the, um, he's, he brings a Pasuk that says, My dechsiv ir ketana v'anashem ba me'at. Uh, that there's a small city, Chazal say in Nidaram, Lamed Beis, Lamed Beis, that there's a small city and only a few people in it. Ir Katana Zehaguf, the small city is referring to the body. Vanashem Bameat Elu Evarim, and the people of this of this uh, of this city are the Evarim, they're the limbs. So the Gemara says that a person's body is compared to a small city, and a person's limbs are consider are compared to um, are compared to people in the city. What exactly does that mean? Uh, so he brings um, the example that just like you have a city uh, and it's split up in the city, in order for it to function, you need doctors, you need politicians, you need government, you need plumbers, you need mechanics, uh, you need uh, builders, construction, right? Uh, accountants. Philip, what do you do? Rabbis. You need rabbis. You need rabbis as well. Yeah. Uh-huh. Give us drushas. <laughs> to give drushas. <laughs> Uh, yeah, what sherries we can drink. Um, we need golf. <laughs> we want to buy golf. But the city needs all different types of people in order to function properly, right? Everybody needs to be doing uh, their chalak, their job. Uh, so he says, just like in a city, you have all these different components. Everybody needs to be do, doing their job focused on the value that they're adding to the city in order for it to function uh, in its uh, totality. Uh, so he says, t- so too... Um, a person's body also, he has different parts. It's very interesting. There's a very popular uh, parts therapy. It's like a popular uh, therapy that's coming out. That, uh, people have different parts to them. Uh, so he's saying also like a person's body has different parts to him. Uh, and he needs all those different parts to be uh, working in synthesis in order uh, for, for him to be functioning properly. Uh, and therefore, he says, uh, if it happens that it's working barbuvia, which is like in everybody's mixed up, right? And the plumber's trying to do the lawyer's job, and the lawyer's trying to do the accountant's job, and the balabatim are trying to do the rabbi's job, and vice versa. Uh, and the rabbi's trying to be the, the manager. <laughs> so if everybody's mixed up, so then nothing's going to function well, right? Everybody's stepping into each other's space. Uh, and then you don't have the plumber, right? If the plumber is like, ah, oh, my job isn't that important, I want to be the doctor, right? And he starts acting like the doctor, A, there's not going to be a plumber, B, he's not going to do the doctor's job as well because he doesn't specialize in that area. Uh, and basically what happens is that everything's going to be confused, nothing's going to get done, the, the city isn't going to function like it should be. Uh, so, so too, he says, kahu gam adam, so too by a person, he can be the most genius person, and he can have all the good midos in the world um, and uh, all the amazing attributes. He says, He's not going to be able to gain anything from it so long as his mind uh, is going from one thing to the next. He's not going to be able to bring out any of his abilities, any of his kohos. Uh, because he's always in this state of distraction and confusion um, and different than the part of his mind that should be focusing on one thing and up focusing on something else, right? So you could have all the talent. You could specialize uh, in whatever you specialize at, uh, but those abilities will never come out if a person's mind is not focused, not centered. Beli seder umishtar, without any kind of uh, seder uh, organization, 
רק כאשר אדם משתמש בכל אחס ממעלוסה במקום ובזמן מתן, it's only when a person uses that ability, right? He uses his uh, professional ability when it's time for his profession, and then he uses his learning ability when it's time for learning, and his, and his davening ability when it's time for davening. It's only when a person could focus on his tafkit, his task, in that moment, that he's going to be able to bring out his full ability, and the city, which is his, uh, his body and his limbs, is going to be able to function to the highest of its capabilities. Uh, so if a person wants to be able to, uh, to function on the highest level, but also bring out his kochos and serve Hashem in the highest ways, uh, he says that it's just like a city. You need to be focusing on what's the tafkid of that part of you uh, at that moment, right? If you're in davening mode, okay, I'm focusing on davening. If you're in learning mode, I'm focusing on learning. Uh, if you're in work mode, okay, I'm focusing on, on work and I'm going to do the best job, give the most value to my customers. Uh, and he says, And this, uh, this ability to focus on all of your, your talents uh, and everything that you have at every moment um, in the right time at the right place, that's called Menucha Sanefesh. Menucha Sanefesh is you're putting your full only into the task that you're meant to be focusing in on in that moment and nothing else. Right? Is this, is this anti-multitasking? Yes, <laughs> very much. Okay. It's anti-multitasking. But, but, but at the same time... The opposite of... <laughs> tasking to do all talents, he just needs to basically say, I'll do one here. Like, he just needs to compartmentalize the time. Meaning, right? Yeah. Meaning he can do 50 things in one day, but as long as he has a different zman for each thing, he's not, like, mixed up in his head. Just exactly, like, yeah. Uh, and, not comp- and not doing like his mind is half here and half here and he's switching back and forth, but like just that one thing that you're meant to be focusing on um, and doing that one thing properly. Uh, yeah, because they don't have the skills and talents. Amazing. Yeah, good example, too. Yeah, they don't specialize in moving the, the forklift and getting everything done. Um, okay. Uh, and then he explains down here. Uh, my, so he, then he, he goes into the opposite of Menuchas and Efesh, and that he calls Bilbul Hadas, right? And that we saw a little bit in the Sefer um, of Cheshben and Efesh last week. That the opposite of Menuchas and Efesh is Bilbul Hadas, when your mind is in a state of confusion, other muval, umuvulval, person is mixed up, Ose Sakol, Maisa Barabuvia, and he's doing all his actions in. Uh, uh, <laughs> Not, not one by one. Uh, he's doing them all mixed up, multitasking. Uh, he comes to do one action. And then his mind is starting to focus on what he needs to do in the future, or what he already did in the past. So instead of his mind being present, in the present moment, what do I need to do right now? He's already thinking, oh, uh, my kids, I need to drop them off later. How am I going to do that? Or he's thinking about the past. Um, oh, why did I say that to my boss? Uh, what's he going to think? What is uh, so as soon as a person's machshavos are on the past or the future, then a person's not present-minded. And then he's not able to focus and center his mind on what he needs to do in the current moment. And when a person's mind is focused past or future, not on the present, he's not going to be able to do something bishlemus with completeness. Uh, he's only going to do it halfway because your, your focus and your attention uh, is not on the current task that you're meant to be doing right now. And he's going to get a little bit into um, later on what about there are certain uses for you thinking about the past, right? A person should always analyze and evaluate, oh, what did I say, what should I do next time? Uh, so there is uses to thinking about the past. There's also uses to thinking about the future, right? We have to plan our lives. Uh, but he's going to discuss when it's appropriate to think about past and future. Uh, basically, he's going to say only when it's connected to the present, right? When it's related to what I need to do right now, and therefore I need to think back about what I did last time, how it worked. Or if a person needs to think about the future in order to plan for the current moment, then it's appropriate to be thinking about the future, 
as a heicha timsa for the current moment. Uh, so, but but um, but when a person's meant to be doing something right now, and when he um, when he comes out with the fact that okay, my tafkid in this moment is to be learning or to be eating, uh, so then a person should put his full into what the tafka that he set out that he should be doing, uh, as opposed to thinking about something else in the past or the future. Uh, and then he continues, uh, What exactly, how exactly do you define this word, uh, So he says, rishona, At the first thought, That menuchas is just like uh, you translate the word. Menucha means rest. And nefesh means of the soul. It's rest of the soul. A person's in a state of total relaxation. Adam she'oses ko ma'isav be'menucha. It's a person who does all his actions very calmly, right? He's always talking, benachas. Um, who mentioned that? The Igris, uh, the Igeris Ramban. Somebody was mentioning. Uh, he's always benachas. He's always in a state of calm, right? He never gets flustered by anything. Uh, so that's what a person would think. Menuchas and Nefesh is. Beregio v'savlana, suvali behilos. He's always calm, always doing things with patience, uh, never getting too worked up. Achin amnam zu hatchuna hativis. Chomer golem she menuchas and Nefesh. He says, yes, this is uh, the chomer golem. This is like the raw material of, of menuchas and Nefesh, but it's not the complete picture. Av aladayin ein ze hatochen hapnimi. Uh, he said it's not, it's not the depth of uh, the inner depth of what Menuchas HaNefesh is all about. Um, this is not the depth of what, uh, what it is. Um, and then he says, um, uh, He continues on to say that there's certain midos where a person's like naturally born with them, uh, but that doesn't mean he obtained the mida, right? So if a person's naturally, he's got a, a lot of energy, uh, and he's always excited about what he does, uh, and not a lazy person, uh, so then yes, that person has zrizos, but he hasn't obtained zrizos um, because he hasn't, uh, what he calls it is, um, he, he hasn't got it, he doesn't have it, um, and he says, just like an ant, right? Like an ant is naturally in a state of zrizos, but he hasn't obtained the midah of zrizos uh, because he hasn't, um, he hasn't, he doesn't know how to use it in its appropriate time when it's not appropriate, um, and he hasn't fully inculcated it from his own volition and like his own choosing uh, into who he is. Uh, and he's saying the same thing with menuchas and You have a person who's naturally very relaxed, doesn't have a lot of anxiety. Right, uh, not in, not in a state of uh, um, of um, of Bilbal Hadas, um, but nevertheless, he hasn't he hasn't integrated the menu, the midah of Menuchas and Nefesh. Uh, what Hashem wants from us is to take, even if we're naturally born right with a more calm state of mind, uh, but Hashem wants us to 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 actually develop it into into ourselves. Uh, when it's appropriate, when it's not appropriate, um, and to, to fully integrate it, that this is what we're living with and why we're living with what we're living with. Uh, so even if a person has it naturally, right, natural tendency, um, still he's meant to be integrating it uh, and owning the mida uh, in its totality um, to, to, to the highest degree. And that's what it's called being uh, actually taking on the mida. Not something that you're inborn with, uh, but something that you've integrated into yourself um, and you live with as one of your, one of your paradigms in life. Uh, and therefore he says, Kahu gam b'maylas menuchas ha-nefesh, gam mishe b'tifu, chasra lo ha-menucha ve'ashalva. And he says on the flip side also, if you have a person uh, who doesn't naturally have menuchas ha-nefesh, right, and he's naturely born with a lot of anxiety and he's always muval ve'atzvani, uh, he's, uh, he's sad, uh, and he's uh, confounded. Kasher yimad v'yeda es atzura v'hagdara hanachonah shemenuchas anefesh yuchol lachanaches atzma liknoso. He can train himself uh, to develop menuchas anefesh properly. Uh, so even a person who doesn't have it naturally shouldn't be like, ah, oh, okay, I'm living with anxiety. Therefore, the only way for me to get out of it uh, is to take take medication, right? And Xanax or whatever, uh, what's Adderall, Ritalin. Um, the Sif Seichayim is saying that there's another way if a person really does deep work 
that he can that he can get out of it. And he says that uh, what what menuchas hanefesh is when a person lives with the feeling the low rock ba'akara sichlis. Not just an intellectual understanding, lenato kol rega mitoch rikuz male shel hamachshava, to uh, he's to use every single moment of life with a complete focus uh, of your mind. The kol hakochos ak verak letafkid shemuto ala beregazet, and all of your energy that you're putting out uh, is all going to go into that one tafkid, that one purpose um, that is muto on you in that moment. So basically what he's saying is that a person has to determine what is my tafkid in this very moment, right? So this morning, waking up, I woke up um, and I thought I plugged in my phone, but unfortunately the, the charger wasn't plugged in. Uh, so I woke up at 6.45 uh, and I was in a state of panic running around. I had to like get the yogurts, kids, breakfast, uh, coffee. <laughs> That's why I brought my coffee here. I didn't have time to drink it outside in the morning. Uh, so, so my, my tafka then was to, to get ready. Did I have to be in a state of, uh, of panic and, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to miss it I'm, and running around? No, because I'm not even more productive when I do that, right? I, I am to a certain degree when I'm a little bit nervous, like, oh, I might not make the timeline. So that gets me a little bit more motivated, right? I'm not going to be chilling with my dummy. I'm going to get the move on. Um, but... Um, but, uh, but my tafkid in that moment was, okay, I, I got to keep moving, uh, but I need to prepare breakfast. These three things, I'm going to cut out the other four things that I usually do in the mornings uh, and just focus on these, get out of the house as fast as possible. Uh, and it, once I determine that that's my tafkid, okay, so now I need to put my full kokos into that. If I'm in a state of learning or preparing a shear uh, or um, I, I want to spend time with my kids, uh, when, I, when, I come, when I come back home, first five minutes, uh, I just want to focus on my kids, not pulling out my phone, uh, not, uh, oh, what do I need to do next, not planning Shabbos with my wife, just spending with my kids, being fully present with them, uh, and creating that, that bond, that connection. So then I put my full totality, all my energy, into just connecting with them. Uh, so first, uh, the first step is to determine what's my tafkid in this moment, what does Hashem want from me right now? Right? Hashem wants me to learn, Hashem wants me to daven. Okay, then the next step is to put your full energy into that tafkid that is mutal on you in that moment. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna pull my full my, now I'm gonna put my full force, my full energy into learning, into the davening with nothing else. No other distraction, anything that comes up, any other distracting thoughts, I'm cutting them out. Uh, and just focusing on what my tafkid is in that moment. Sometimes on a, that might be nice, but it might not be Realistic per se. Uh, I don't know. Meaning, everyone's. Uh, let's say you're home and you're you're learning Torah or you're you're working, and then you, your kid something happens. He falls over. He's crying. You need a hug. But yeah. You've got to stop what you're doing. It's just. Yeah. So I guess so you have to minimize the, the, the volume <coughs> of distractions, but it's hard to know. Like, I don't know. It's, it's very difficult today. Yeah. Because what do you do? You're, let's say, even you get a phone call. So, so Alex is asking, like, let's say, right, you're in the middle of learning, and then your kid falls down. He's crying. He now needs a, a hug. So, so what he would say, the Sif Sechayim, is that now your tafkid in that moment changed. Before your tafkid in the moment was to learn, right? And even though your kids are playing or whatever is happening, uh, or you're, oh, no, I forgot to file my taxes, uh, or, oh, I wonder what happened to that stock uh, that was going down. I need to check it up. Uh, you cut out all those thoughts. No, I'm just focusing on my tafkid in this moment, which is learning uh, and nothing else. But then as soon as your kid starts crying, right, and he's, uh, or he's bleeding or he has a cut, so now your tafkid in that moment changed, right? Before it was learning, as soon as your kid starts crying, so now, now you determine that, okay, my tafkid in this moment is now not anymore to learn. Now my tafkid in this moment is to help my kid who is, who is uh, crying or hurt. And then as soon as you take care of that, then your tafkid in the moment changes back. Okay, now I have extra time. Now my tafkid changes to learning. Again. work at or, or, or uh, think about. 
automatically. Well, that's an urgent situation. You know, the child needs you right now. It's not as if uh, oh, your phone's gone off and you need to check what's, what message is now on the WhatsApp group. That you can check later. You know, yeah. you're busy learning now. But when your kid uh, is crying, then there's something oh, urgent. Really to take care of. So that's yeah. probably what determines what your tough kid is now. Yeah. Your tough kid isn't to check the WhatsApp group. Right. Because you're learning now. That should be more important right now. Yeah. Uh, and putting like your full fo that's basically what it is, like pu putting your full focus on it. Uh, but I agree with Tibby that like in an urgent situation, you naturally do that, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. like what Philip was saying. saying. to minimize the non-urgent distractions, meaning if you have your WhatsApp phone right in front of you and every time it pings, someone sends a stupid message or every time you get an email, you get a notification, you're never going to be able to concentrate what you're doing. I would also wonder, you know, like, I, th I think there's a distinction between mentally multitasking, which is the almost impossible to just think about two things at once, where as opposed to doing a menial task and thinking about something else. Like, let's say you're folding the washing, and like you think, okay, I can fold the washing, but I can also be wish call up my grandmother and wish her good chance at the same time. Yeah. I don't think he would say that's a problem. Maybe he would. I don't like. I, I think he would say, okay, that's. You don't have to be like, okay, I'm following the clothing, like, how am I doing it? Like, yeah. just do it, right? Yeah. Well, even, like, the Torah says, the left of there. You, you can talk and learning when you're walking. You don't have to be, like, walking, okay, now I'm walking, I'm not learning. Now I'm learning, I'm not walking. Yeah. Like, I think there is a certain, you can do a menial thing and think of something. I think what he's saying is that if you have business and relationships and kids and WhatsApp and 50 things on your mind, that's almost impossible to navigate. Yeah. That's billable. Yeah, that's you know, that, billable. That, that's when yeah. your mind is literally in two places at once. Yeah. Um, and, and anytime you're taking it out of the present moment. So if you're like, okay, in the yeah. present moment, I want to be doing these two things, then multitasking might be appropriate, right? Because uh, in this moment, I want to be calling my grandma, and, and yeah. that's my tough good right now. That's what Hashem would but want me to maximize my like time. Anyone who, let's say, has an employee or a child or some, some, vet, some other person who's they're responsible for, they could be saying, okay, now I'm doing X, but like if something comes up that needs to be addressed with Y, like uh, another person, like you, you kind of have to drop what you're doing to a certain extent, and you can choose what, at what point you would drop what you're doing. Like my phone's actually buzzing in my pocket right now, right? Yeah. So like, <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, you well know, done, Alex, you learned something from this year. Yeah. <laughs> right, so your mind's going, your yeah, mind's going uh, in the buzz. Uh, and it's tough. There's always stuff, Vine. Switch off. Before you come to shul, you don't listen to the news broadcast because then your mind then yeah. goes to something else. Yes. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I've finished talking. <laughs> 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 my wife. My wife. Yeah. Uh, uh, my that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a good one, Timmy. Uh, I, I had to do that for a while. I keep my at nighttime. I put my phone on airplane mode, and then I, for a while I was keeping it until after Shacharis, just because as soon as I would turn it off, there were, I would get those three messages in the morning, and then your mind's thinking about them as you're coming into Shacharis and learning, and like, oh, I need to get back, and like you feel that sense of urgency of getting back to people, especially in today's world. There's like this sense of uh, immediacy when you when you when we do things, they're expecting a reply right away, and you're already thinking about what you're going to reply, and then you come into Shacharis. And your mind's just not there. Uh, and that's basically what he's describing Menuchas and Nefesh is being fully present. Your mind's just focused on now. What do I need to be doing? What does Hashem want from me right now? Uh, not on the future or the past, what happened, what's going to happen, what I need to do. Uh, just on right now in the present. Um, and then also not on what's outside of my current realm. Uh, because if a person's right now here and they're thinking about Israel and uh, attacks, so then that's also going to be distracting. Or a person's thinking about uh, what's happening in uh, Ayers Rock or, uh, any, or the politics that are happening or the news here, there, uh, or a natural disaster that's happening. So then as soon as a person's thinking about anything outside of his current realm, also that's going to take away your attention and your attention's going to be focusing on there. Uh, so I'm not saying that a person should never have time to know what's going on in the world. If a person deems that necessary and is like, ah, Hashem wants me to know what's going on in the world, so then he, sh he should allocate time, uh, but he should have that specific time where he thinks about it, but then it shouldn't come into his head 
when he's learning or working or whatever, whatever he's doing and whatever is, is his tafkat in that moment. Uh, so basically what it's coming down to is being present-minded, fully focused on the tafkat that Hashem wants from you right now, not the future or the past, and not on any circumstances that are happening outside of your current, uh, of your current realm where you are. That's what we'll leave off with. Amazing. Shkoyach, guys.